Comic book movies are the big thing in Hollywood right now, and everyone wants to get in on the action. We all love the movies Marvel are putting out, and DCs aren't too bad either, but we're all familiar with their upcoming offerings in the next few years. Pretty much everyone knows about Spawn and Hellboy being rebooted too, but there are definitely some movies about comic book characters that you didn't know were on the way. Let's take a look at some of them. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. It's the best way of keeping up to date with all of Screen Rant's great new videos. If you don't like it, don't use it. No, let me, how does it work? Shit! Green Hornet. The Green Hornet is undoubtedly most famous for being the titular character in his own 1960s television series, which starred Van Williams as the Green Hornet and his alter ego Britt Reed, and Bruce Lee as his sidekick Kato. But the masked crime fighter is also a comic book character, with the publishing rights to the character having been with Early Comics, Now Comics, Holyoke Publishing, and Dynamite Entertainment over the years. He's also had a number of movies made about him, including a 1994 Hong Kong action movie called The Green Hornet, a 2006 French short movie called The Green Hornet, and a 2011 action comedy starring Seth Rogen called, you guessed it, The Green Hornet. The franchise is set to be rebooted in the coming years, with the accountant's Gavin O'Connor in the director's chair. Paramount Pictures will be responsible for the movie's distribution, and although it's probably a reboot we could do without, we still hope it'll be an enjoyable movie. And hopefully it'll capture the essence of the classic television show, rather than the stench of Seth Rogen's recent comedic movie attempt. The film failed to make anyone laugh, and had some of the most boring action scenes you could possibly imagine. We're not partners. I'm the hero. You're my sidekick! Invincible. Speaking of Seth Rogen, it looks like he'll be co-directing a movie with Evan Goldberg about one of Image Comics' most iconic heroes, the extremely formidable Invincible. Invincible is otherwise known as Marcus Sebastian Grayson, the son of Nolan Grayson, who is also a superhero that uses the name Omni-Man as well as a successful novelist. And this movie will be the first time the character has appeared on the big screen, although MTV2 do broadcast the motion comic based on the character, so he has kind of seen some small screen action in recent years. The character is essentially a typical Superman analog who possesses powers like super strength and speed, a high level of invulnerability, flight, decelerated aging, and an enhanced healing factor. He's a member of a race of peaceful alien explorers called Viltrumites, all of whom possess similar superpowers, and Marcus's abilities manifested when he was 17 years old, while he was working his part-time job on Earth. The movie will be distributed by Universal Pictures and has the potential to be a real surprise classic, especially if mainstream movie audiences are prepared to embrace a stereotypical superhero who doesn't come from the pages of Marvel or DC comic books. <laughs> Flash Gordon. Everybody loves Flash Gordon, right? As cheesy as it was, we can't help but be big fans of the iconic 1980 movie with Sam Wilson in the titular role, Max von Sydow as the evil Ming the Merciless, and the irrepressible Brian Blessed as Prince Vulton. Flash is, of course, the New York Jets football star who ended up in space, where he was forced to battle the aforementioned Ming and his armies. He's also a comic book character with his comics being published by King Features Syndicate, and he's appeared in a number of television shows over the years, including perhaps most memorably the fantastic 1980s cartoon Defenders of the Earth, where he appeared alongside the likes of The Phantom and Mandrake the Magician. Now, rather excitingly, there's a new Flash Gordon movie on the way with X-Men First Class director Matthew Vaughn at the helm. It'll be distributed by Fox when it eventually gets released, but it's currently being held back because of the popularity of Guardians of the Galaxy and, to a lesser extent, the Star Wars resurgence, which are deemed too similar to it. But we can't wait for it, and we certainly hope its delay doesn't last too long. Where? What are you talking about? I don't got no fat! There's no fat here! I don't got no fat! FAT! The Toxic Avenger the Toxic Avenger is an awesome character! His 1984 movie, which was released by Troma Entertainment and is best described as a comedy splatter offering, is iconic in its own special way and now has a cult fanbase. Although the movie was the character's first appearance, the Toxic Avenger has since appeared in various other media, including stage productions and various comics, which have been published by Troma themselves and indeed Marvel. If you're not familiar with the character, his real name is Melvin Ferd, and he's a hero who gained superhuman strength after falling into a drum of toxic waste, an accident that also left him hideously deformed. 
And he's got a new movie on the way! Hooray! It'll be directed by Conrad Vernon, who co-directed the likes of Shrek 2 and Sausage Party, and directed the likes of Monsters vs. Aliens and Madagascar 3, Europe's Most Wanted. Weed Road Pictures will distribute the reboot, and it will definitely be very different from any other superhero movie from the modern era. At this point, it's difficult to imagine how it'll be received, or if there'll even be an audience for it. But we certainly hope it does well, as the original movie has a special place in all of our hearts. Malignant Man Malignant Man is a little-known character from a 2011 Boom Comics graphic novel by James Wan. Yep, the same fella who's known for directing movies like Saw, Dead Silence, Insidious, The Conjuring, Furious 7, and the upcoming Aquaman movie in the DCEU. Malignant Man is about a guy named Alan who gets cancer but later finds out that that's a good thing as it gives him a variety of superpowers. The story then becomes a sort of cat and mouse chase involving two groups, one of which wants to help Alan and one that actually wants to hurt him. It's an interesting idea. There's absolutely no doubt about that. But the story was executed very poorly in comic book form, so it's something of a surprise to learn that there's a movie based on the character in the works. Hopefully a live action adaptation gets the whole thing right. Strangely enough, the aforementioned creator of the character won't be the man directing the movie. San Andreas director Brad Payton was originally attached to it, but it has since been revealed that it'll be helmed by Electric Children director Rebecca Thomas and distributed by 20th Century Fox. Bloodshot Bloodshot, whose real name is Raymond Garrison, is an awesome character who appears in comic books published by Valiant Comics. A former soldier and a superb hand-to-hand -hand combatant, Bloodshot is a super strong, super fast, and super durable hero who possesses the powers of regeneration, technopathy, and metamorphing, which were all made possible through having nanites injected into his blood. The result? His bloodstream contains a billion nanocomputers. He's actually a member of the Unity superhero team, but a solo movie is apparently on the cards for the character rather than one featuring all of Unity's team members. David Wilson is set to direct the movie, with Columbia Pictures dealing with its distribution. Now, Vin Diesel was recently in talks to play the lead, while Jared Leto has expressed an interest in playing the movie's villain, which is believed to be Angelo Mortali, a character who is intimately linked to the titular hero. It's more than likely that the movie will be R-rated given the nature of the character. And that would probably go down well in the current cinematic climate. You only have to look at the likes of Logan and both of the Deadpool movies for emphatic proof of that. The Plutonian the Plutonian is the main character in the brilliant Irredeemable comic books, which are published by Boom Comics. Irredeemable tells the story of the character's fall from being the world's greatest superhero as he begins mercilessly slaughtering the population of Earth. The Plutonian is another Superman-esque character in terms of his powers, but he's obviously very different in terms of his characteristics. His movie, which is set to be called Irredeemable like the comic rather than being named after him, will be directed by Adam McKay who's most famous for directing comedies like Anchorman, The Legend of Ron Burgundy, Talladega Nights, The Ballad of Ricky Bobby, Step Brothers, The Other Guys, and The Big Short, as well as for his work as the head writer on Saturday Night Live. It is therefore quite hard to imagine what it's going to be like, as it's difficult to see how humor could be added to a movie about a rogue superhero slaughtering Earth's people. 20th Century Fox are set to distribute the movie, and given that its main character is an even more violent, bloodthirsty, homicidal maniac than Avengers Infinity War's Thanos, it'll certainly be different to most comic book movies we've seen in the past. He has got to be kidding. The Rocketeer the Rocketeer is the superhero alter ego of stunt pilot Cliff Secord, and he first appeared on panel in 1982 as an homage to the Saturday matinee serial heroes who were popular from the 1930s through to the 1950s. The character possesses a jetpack that allows him to fly after having found it hidden when two gangsters dumped it while they were on the run from the police. Throughout the years, the character's comics have been published by a variety of companies, including Pacific Comics, Eclipse Comics, Comico Comics, Dark Horse Comics, and IDW Publishing. He's actually already had a movie, 1991's The Rocketeer, which was produced and distributed by Walt Disney Pictures and Buena Vista Pictures respectively. The character is set to appear in a new movie and will be overseen by Disney again, and will feature a black female pilot in the lead role. It'll be called The Rocketeers, and will be a sequel to the original movie, set just a few years after. It. The first one was extremely underrated and didn't get anywhere near the recognition and acclaim it deserved. And if Disney put everything into the new movie, it has the potential to be absolutely fantastic. The Shadow The Shadow started life as a collection of serialized dramas, 
originally in 1930s pulp novels, but it's spun off into a variety of different media since then. Comic books are of course one of them, with both Street and Smith and Condé Nast having been responsible for the publication over the years. There have also been a number of shadow movies produced, including several shorts in the 1930s, but the most notable is definitely the 1994 movie that starred Alec Baldwin as the titular character, who's otherwise known as Lamont Cranston, as well as Kent Allard in the comics. The character is a vigilante who can bend people's perceptions so he cannot be seen, except of course for his shadow, hence his name. And there's another movie on the way. There's no director attached yet, but it'll be produced by Columbia Pictures, and although we will eagerly anticipate its release, it will have to be a damn sight better than the 1994 version if it has any hope of being successful. Because quite frankly, that movie, whilst undeniably visually very impressive, really was about as forgettable as is possible for a superhero movie to be. You have one chance to live. The Crow. The Crow is a superhero who, having been paralyzed by a group of thugs, witnessed them beat his girlfriend, rape her, and shoot her in the head. He later died from his own injuries in a hospital, before being resurrected by a crow and subsequently seeking vengeance on the murderers. His comic books have been published by a number of different companies, including Caliber Press, Kitchen Sink Press, Image Comics, and IDW Publishing. But he is undoubtedly best known to mainstream audiences for his 1994 movie. Bruce Lee's son, Brandon, starred as the character, and he infamously died during the filming in an accident involving a prop gun. Three inferior sequels were made in 1996, 2000, and 2005 respectively, but the character is now set to receive a modern movie reboot. Titled The Crow Reborn, the film is set for a 2019 release, with Columbia Pictures as the studio responsible for its distribution. English director Corin Hardy, who directed 2015's horror movie The Hollow, and will also direct this year's The Nun, was originally attached to the Crow reboot, but he left the production along with actor Jason Momoa. Hopefully, the film can get everything together in time for the set release. What are you doing to me? I've never felt like this before. And that is the end of our video. Did you enjoy it? Which of these movies are you looking forward to the most? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Screen Rant for more great videos like this one. Bye for now!